He was a sailor, a pirate, a hunter, a trapper, an explorer, and a survivor. He was Hugh Glass, one of the most legendary figures of the American frontier. His astonishing tale of courage and endurance has been told and retold for generations, inspiring books, films, and songs. But who was the real Hugh Glass and what drove him to overcome the most harrowing ordeal of his life? This is the incredible story of Hugh Glass, the 19th century frontiersman whose story inspired The Revenant. Hugh Glass was born around 1783 in Pennsylvania to Irish immigrant parents. Little is known about his early life, but by 1817, he was working as a sailor on a merchant ship. According to some accounts, his ship was captured by the notorious pirate Jean Lafitte, who gave him the choice to join his crew or die. Glass chose to become a pirate and served under Lafitte for a year or two before escaping to the shores of Texas. There, he was captured by the Pawnee tribe with whom he lived for several years, learning their language and customs. He may have even married a Pawnee woman, though this is uncertain. In 1822, Glass heard of a fur trading expedition led by General William Henry Ashley, who was looking for 100 men to explore the uncharted lands of the upper Missouri River. Glass eagerly signed up, hoping to find adventure and fortune in the wilderness. He became part of a group known as Ashley's Hundred, a band of hardy and daring men who braved the dangers of the frontier, hunting, trapping and trading furs with the Native Americans. Glass proved to be a skilled and fearless frontiersman, adept at navigating the rugged terrain and dealing with hostile tribes. He also made friends with some of his fellow trappers, such as Jim Bridger, John Fitzgerald, and Thomas Fitzpatrick. Together they faced many perils and hardships, but none as great as the one that befell Glass in the summer of 1823. It was then that Glass and a small party of trappers were scouting ahead of the main group, looking for game near the Grand River in present-day South Dakota. As Glass was walking alone, he stumbled upon a grizzly bear and her two cubs. Before he could react, the bear charged at him, knocking him to the ground and mauling him with her claws and teeth. Glass fought back with his knife, stabbing the bear repeatedly, but not before she inflicted severe wounds on his back, chest, leg, and throat. He was left bleeding and barely alive as the bear collapsed and died beside him. The other trappers heard his screams and rushed to his aid. They were shocked to find him still breathing, but they had little hope for his recovery. They carried him to a nearby clearing, where they made a crude stretcher out of branches and animal skins. They waited for him to die, but he refused to give up. He lingered on for days, unable to speak or move, but somehow clinging to life. The trappers knew they had to move on, as they were in hostile territory and running low on supplies. They decided to leave two men behind to watch over Glass and bury him when he died. They offered $80 to anyone who would volunteer for the task. Jim Bridger, a young and inexperienced trapper, and John Fitzgerald, a seasoned and greedy one, agreed to stay with Glass. The rest of the party departed, leaving them with a rifle, a knife, a tomahawk, and a fire-making kit. Bridger and Fitzgerald soon grew impatient and fearful, as Glass showed no signs of dying. They were also worried about the Arikara tribe, who were known to be hostile to white men. They decided to abandon Glass, taking his weapons and tools with them. They rationalized their betrayal by telling themselves that Glass was as good as dead and that they were saving their own lives. They covered him with a buffalo robe and left him to his fate. Glass, however, was not dead. He regained consciousness and realized that he had been deserted by his companions. He was furious and determined to survive and seek revenge. He had no weapons, no tools, no food, no water, and no shelter. He was surrounded by enemies, both human and animal. He was hundreds of miles away from the nearest fort. He was in unimaginable pain and his wounds were infected and festering. He had every reason to give up, but he did not. He began a remarkable journey of survival, crawling and stumbling across the wilderness following the course of the river. He ate whatever he could find, such as berries, roots, insects, and even rotting meat from animal carcasses. He drank from streams and puddles and sometimes sucked the moisture from the soil. He used maggots to clean his wounds and made a crude raft to cross the river. He endured the scorching heat of the day and the freezing cold of the night. He avoided or fought off predators, such as wolves, cougars, and rattlesnakes. He also encountered friendly tribes, such as the Sioux and the Mandan, who gave him food, shelter, and medicine. 
He traveled for six weeks, covering over 200 miles, until he reached Fort Kiowa, a trading post on the Missouri River. There, he was welcomed by his fellow trappers, who were astonished to see him alive. They nursed him back to health and listened to his incredible story. They also told him that Bridger and Fitzgerald had joined another expedition and were somewhere in the mountains. Glass was not satisfied. He wanted justice. He wanted revenge. He set out again, this time armed and equipped to track down the men who had betrayed him. He followed their trail for months, crossing the Rocky Mountains and braving the winter snow. He finally caught up with Bridger, who was only 19 years old at the time. Glass confronted him, but decided to spare his life as he was young and remorseful. He also learned that Fitzgerald had joined the army and was stationed at Fort Atkinson in present-day Nebraska. Glass traveled to Fort Atkinson, where he demanded to see Fitzgerald. He was denied access as Fitzgerald was under the protection of the army. Glass tried to sneak into the fort, but was caught and arrested. He was released after he explained his situation to the commanding officer, who sympathized with him, but also warned him not to harm Fitzgerald. Glass agreed, but asked for his rifle back, which Fitzgerald had taken from him. The officer obliged, and Glass left the fort, satisfied that he had reclaimed his property and that Fitzgerald had been exposed as a coward and a liar. Glass never saw Fitzgerald again, but he did not forget him. He continued to live as a frontiersman, hunting, trapping, and exploring new lands. He also became a legend as his story spread among the traders and trappers of the frontier. He was admired for his courage, endurance, and spirit of adventure. He was also respected for his forgiveness, as he did not kill the men who had wronged him, but rather showed them mercy and compassion. Hugh Glass died in 1833, at the age of 50, in a skirmish with the Arikara tribe, near the Yellowstone River. He was buried in an unmarked grave, somewhere in the vast wilderness that he had traversed and loved. His legacy lives on, as his story has inspired generations of writers, filmmakers and adventurers who have tried to capture the essence of his remarkable life. This is the incredible story of Hugh Glass, the 19th century frontiersman whose story inspired The Revenant.